Well, welcome back tonight. We've got a great topic on factoring. Now, we've already thrown some factoring at you. You talked about it back in Algebra 1. And we're just going to cover all our bases tonight and talk about all the types of factoring you need to be familiar with. So here we go. Our first type of factoring is known as GCF, the greatest common factor. In this type of factoring, we want to divide out common factors. Let's try a few examples. Write each of the following binomials as the product of a binomial's GCF and another binomial. So basically I'm saying, what does this term and this term have in common? Well, they're both divisible by 3. Remember, my key is I am dividing. They're both divisible by 3, so I can pull out a 3. And they both have an x, so I am pulling out a GCF of 3x. Then I have to ask myself, if I divide that out, what's left? Well, I'm taking 3x squared, and I'm dividing out a 3x. The 3's cancel, and x squared divided by x is just x. Then I have a plus sign, and I have a 6x divided by 3x. Well, the x's cancel, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. And I'm as good as I want to get. I don't want to do anything else at this point. I just wanted to pull out a GCF of 3x. B. What is the GCF this time? We'll just start with those numbers. 20 and 5, do they have anything in common? Can you divide anything out of them? Well, I would say I could pull out a 5. I also see a GCF of x. So I'm pulling out 5x, and I'm asking myself what's left. Again, remember, you are dividing them out. Well, if you can't do it in your head, 20x divided by 5x, the x's cancel, I'm left with a 4, and there's a minus sign. 5x squared divided by 5x leaves me with x. Now, how do you know if you're right? Well, you should be able to distribute this back through and get what you started with. 5x times 4 is 20x minus 5x squared, and that's exactly what I started with. All right, well, I'm going to pause it, and why don't you pause it as well and try the next two on your own, see if we get the same answer. So again, pause it, see what you get. So you see my answers, and remember, you can always check just by taking this term and distributing it. 5x times 2x is 10x squared, and 5x times 5 is 25x. 10 times 3x squared is 30x squared, and I have that minus sign. 10 times 2 is 20. Another type of factoring you should be familiar with is the difference of two perfect squares. So before I continue, we better just talk about what a perfect square is. Remember, a perfect square is any number times itself. For example, the first perfect square is 1. And now why is that a perfect square? Well, 1 times 1 is 1. The next perfect square is 4 because 2 times 2 is 4. The next perfect square would be 9, 3 times 3, and I could continue to go on. Uh, 16 because of 4 times 4, etc. And you can go down the list. Now, you should probably know the first, you know, 10 perfect squares. Other things to keep in mind are variables. x squared is a perfect square because of x times x. Well, how about x to the fourth? x to the fourth happens when I do x squared times x squared. Remember, when I multiply, I add the exponents. So x to the fourth is a perfect square. What would the next perfect square be? Well, think x cubed times x cubed actually gets you x to the, add exponents, 6. Okay, so these are all perfect squares as well, not as common as these guys. Let's factor some difference of two perfect squares. Now, we talked about multiplying conjugates, and that leads us into the difference of two perfect squares. Notice, if I have a square term minus a square term, hence the difference of two perfect squares, I get these two conjugates, x minus a and x plus a. So let's try the first example. Write each of the following binomials as the product of a conjugate pair. And this is really that difference of two squares. You'll notice x squared is a perfect square, and 9 is a perfect square, and just catch the difference. Make sure you're subtracting. If I am, these should be conjugates. Well, x squared is perfect because of x times x, and 9 is perfect because of 3 times 3. And 1 gets a plus, 1 gets a minus. 
Remember, those are conjugates. Let's try the next one. 4 minus x squared. Just ask yourself, are they perfect? 4 is perfect, x squared is perfect, and there's a difference, a minus sign. So now notice the 4 came first. That means I have to put my 2 first. And the x came second, so the x goes second. X or 2 plus x and 2 minus x. Now remember, it doesn't matter if I put the 2 minus x first and the 2 plus x second. I'll still get the same result. All right, let's add another one in here. C. Notice 4 is a perfect square, x squared is a perfect square, and 25. So these should, again, should be conjugates. This will be 2x and 2x and 5 and 5, and 1 gets a plus, 1 gets a minus. All right, well, hopefully you've got that pattern figured out. Why don't you pause it, try the last one, see if we get the same thing. I've got 4 plus 9x and 4 minus 9x, and I hope you would agree 16 is perfect because 4 times 4, 81, 9, and 9, and there's an x there. Many times you'll see the directions factor completely, and what that implies is you'll probably have to factor more than once. So let's try a few examples. Notice it says using a combination of GCF and difference of perfect squares, rewrite each of the following. So we always, always start with GCF first. Okay, I can pull something out. Hopefully you notice you can pull out a 5 and you're left with x squared minus 4. Now, what they're implying by factor completely is you're not done. You can factor more than once. Inside my parentheses, I see the difference of two perfect squares. So notice I leave that 5 alone and I'll break this up. x plus 2 and x minus 2. Notice that 5 came down for the ride. Don't lose that 5. Let's try the next one. What type of GCF can I attack first? Hopefully you're saying divide by 7. Now, here's a bear trap some of us fall in. Some of us just say the answer is 4x squared. That would be incorrect, because if I stop there, all I would get when I multiply back is 28x squared. And I need to get 28x squared minus 7. So what do I have to have on the end? I have to have a minus 1. So watch that bear trap. We don't want to get stuck in there. Again, I'm pulling out the 7 and I'm dividing. 7 divided by 7 is 1. Now the directions were factored completely, so that implies I'm not done. Leave that 7 alone and look and see we've got perfect squares. So the 4x squared becomes 2x times 2x. That 1 becomes a plus 1 and a minus 1. All right, letter C. Remember, start with the GCF. What do they have in common? Well, I notice they both end in 0, so I'm going to assume they have a 10 in common. I'm going to pull out a GCF of 10. When I do that, 10 times what will leave me 40? Well, that's 4. Then there's that minus sign. 10 goes into 250, 25 times, and I have that x squared. Remember, factor completely means I'm not done. Bring that 10 along for the ride, and I've got difference of two squares. Notice that minus sign for that difference. 4 is perfect because of 2 times 2. 1 gets a plus, 1 gets a minus. 25 and x squared are 5x and 5x. Well, I'm sure you've got the idea figured out by now, so why don't you pause it and try D on your own. And you can see what I got. I G pulled out a GCF of a 3x. I was left with x squared minus 16, which is a difference of two squareds. Brought my 3x down and have x plus 4 and x minus 4. Trinomial factoring. Now, in trinomial factoring, our quadratic looks like ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay? And the little saying I like to use is MAM. M-A-M. And what that tells me is I need to multiply to the first term, add to the second term, and multiply to the third term. So MAM is the little acronym I use to remember it. And again, this is for trinomial factoring, when I have three pieces, trinomial. So let's go ahead and try a few. In A, so I'm going to put my MAM and ask myself, multiply, add, multiply. The first term is pretty nice. What multiplies to x squared? Well, that's pretty straightforward. Basically, x and x. 
Now I go to the other multiplying, and I say, okay, what multiplies to 35? Well, I've got 1 and 35, and I can think of 5 times 7, and after that, I'm, I'm pretty stuck. Those are the two I came up with. Now, out of those two choices, which of those two can add to a 7? I'm sorry, add to a 2. Well, 1 and 35 either make 36 or 34 if I add or subtract. 7 and 5 if I add make 12 or 2 if I add or subtract. So there's my winner. I've got to pick 5 and 7. Now, I have to add to a negative 2, so that tells me I have to have a negative 7 and a positive 5. The other thing I had to do was multiply to a negative 35, which tells me my signs have to be different. And there's your trinomial factoring. Ma'am, multiply, add, multiply. Let's try another. Multiply, add, multiply. So, again, my first terms are going to be x and x. They multiply to x squared. Now, 24 has a few more factors. So I could go 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. Out of those choices, I somehow have to come up with 11 when I add. Which of these choices can make 11? Hopefully you're picking 3 and 8. And I would get 11 if I add those together. I would need a positive 3 and a positive 8. And notice a positive times a positive makes a positive 24. And there you have it. Why don't you pause it, try the last two, and see if we're on the same page. Well, there you have my factors. I've got x minus 11 and x minus 2. These two multiply to a positive and add to a negative. Negative 10 and positive 5 multiply to a negative 50 but add to a negative 5. In this section, you'll notice the directions say completely factored. Again, that word completely is your hint that you probably have to factor more than once. So let's start with that first example. Remember, the first type of factoring I always look for is GCF. Is there a GCF in this trinomial? I would say yes. Looks like I can pull out a 4. When I do that, I'm left with x squared plus 3x minus 10. Now remember, completely was the key word, so I'm going to attempt to factor this again. Bring that 4 down. Ma'am for my trinomial factoring. So I know I've got x and x. 10, I'm thinking 5 and 2. And to get a plus 3, I would add 5 and subtract 2. So here is my factored. Make sure all three terms are in your factored answer. B. Again, I would look for that GCF first. Looks like I can pull out a 6. When I do that, I'm left with x squared minus 4. Now, don't stop there. That word completely means factor again. So I'm going to bring down my 6, and I see perfect squares. So x plus 2 and x minus 2. Well, I think you've got the drill, so let's pause it again and try those last two on your own. Well, you can see mine and hopefully you have the same thing. Just make sure that GCF you pulled out stays in front of your answers. Now, look how ugly this next example is. 1 fourth minus 9 25th x squared. It might look pretty intimidating, but in fact, it's actually pretty nice. Look at all these numbers. What's special about 4, 9, 25, x squared, and even 1? They're all perfect squares. So this actually factors very nicely. Again, it looks ugly and intimidating, but it's not too bad. Ask yourself, what makes 1 perfect? Well, remember, that's 1 times 1. And what makes 4 perfect is 2 times 2. So this is really just 1 half times 1 half. What makes 9 perfect and what makes 25 perfect? Well, that's a 3 and a 5. And x squared is perfect because of that x. So 3 fifths x. And remember, 1 gets a plus and 1 gets a minus. So don't let those fractions scare you. Just ask yourself, why are they all perfect? Our last big examples deal with the zero product law. And we use this law when we are asked to solve equations. Notice we haven't solved anything yet. All we've done was factor. So let's take a look at these examples. Notice they actually say the word solve each of the following equations for all values of x. And they have a solve because they all have an equal sign. 
So basically, all we're going to do is probably what you've heard many times before in algebra is what we call tee it up. Basically, you make a T between each of your factors. So these are factored, and I'm just going to T in between there and set each side equal to 0. x plus 7 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. Uh, subtract the 7, so I get x equals negative 7, and add the 3. So I get x equals 3. These are my solutions, and we typically write them in brackets. So again, the only time I'm doing this is if I see that word solve. Try the next one. I'll just tee it up between the two factors and set each one equal to zero. Now this one doesn't have a beautiful answer, but that's okay. I add that five over and I get two fifths equals x, so x equals five halves. Add my four over, x equals four. So my two solutions would be 5 halves and 4. Now lastly, some people fall for this little bear trap, let's be careful. How many t's do I have to make in this one? Because I have three factors, I've got a t in between each set of factors. Even though it's a 4 out front, it's still a factor. Now set each one equal to 0. And carefully solve. Now here's that bear trap I'm talking about. Some people like to tell me that this is true. Is 4 equal to 0? Heck no. So we're just going to kill that answer there. That doesn't make any sense. In this case, I'm going to subtract my 2. So 3x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 2 thirds. And here I'm going to add my 3. 4x equals 3. So x equals 3 fourths. So I only have two solutions even though there were three factors. Solve each of the following quadratic equations using the zero product law. So the zero product law says you have to equal zero. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides and subtract 10. That leaves me with x squared plus 5x minus 24 equals zero. So again, because I see the word solve, that's when I'm going to tee it up. So I have to get my factors. I've got a nice trinomial. I'm going to say multiply x to x. To get to this negative 24, I, again I can use 1 and 24, 2 and 12, uh, 3 and 8, and i got to make a 5, so I'm going to go 3 and 8. I need a positive 5, so plus 8 and minus 3. Keep that equal 0 there. And because I saw solve, I'm teeing it up. So x minus 3 equals 0. x plus 8 equals 0. x equals 3. And x equals negative 8. So my two solutions are negative 8 and 3. Well, that does it for us tonight. We're going to get a lot of practice in class tomorrow. And just really watch that word solve. That's the only time you actually tee it up and get an answer. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.